Hi, my name is Eleanor and today we're going to be soldering the DIY speaker kit. The DIY speaker is made up of an amplifier and an exciter. It's also compatible with Arduino, which means you can mute the sound and also send it sound signals through your Arduino. We'll be following the DIY speaker kit manual and all our resources are available online and for free on our website. So the tools you'll need for this are your um, desolder, your white tack, solder, snips, safety goggles and also your soldering iron. So let's have a look at what's inside the box. So your components are split into four different groups, inputs and outputs, capacitors, chips and resistors and also you have your stereo jack cable, battery clip and sticky summer tape. And also remember to put in your safety goggles and tie up your hair. Right, right, let's start soldering. So what you want to do before you start soldering is tin the tip of the soldering iron. So all you do is apply the solder straight on and it should melt and then clean it off. And when you're finished it should be nice and shiny. So your PCB. PCB stands for printed circuit board. It is a board with a pre-designed circuit that is printed onto it. The amplifier is made up of the components soldered onto the PCB. You have two diodes. A diode is a component that allows current to flow in just one direction. The black band indicates the negative side of the diode. It must go into your circuit the correct way round. So before soldering a component, you want to bend the legs 90 degrees. And an easy way of doing this is against the table, just like that. So let's do it with the other leg as well. So you should have a component that looks like this. So if you look on your board, there's two places for the diodes, one here and then another one up here, like that. And then you want to turn it over and bend the legs 45 degrees. This holds the component in place. Put some white tack underneath your PCB. So what you want to do when you're soldering is you want to heat up both the gold pad and the leg of the component. So if you just hold it at the base for a few seconds, maybe three seconds, and go in with a little bit of solder. You really don't want that much solder around the joint, just enough, a little mountain shape, to secure both the component. Just like that. So once you finish soldering, what you want to do is snip the legs off. So a safe way of doing this is holding the leg with one hand and then using the snips to snip off the leg with the other. And you snip it just above the soldering joint you've made, so it's nice and flush like that. The same with this one. So we're going to do the next one the same way. You have six different resistors in total. Resistors are used in a circuit to reduce the flow of electrical current and at the same time lower the voltage. So your next component is your resistor, and this one has yellow, violet, and gold, then gold bands on it, and this means it's a 4.7 ohm resistor. So it goes in this hole here. So it's the same with the diodes, you solder it a nice clean solder joint like that, clip off the legs, and then it should look like this on the other side. So this is the next resistor. This is your 1 ohm resistor and we know this because of the brown, black, then gold, then gold stripes on it. So these ones, they go in the one here and then another one here. So make sure that before you start each of your joints that you tin your soldering iron each time. This is how it should look at the front. So your next component is your 1.2k ohm resistor. This is brown, red, red, gold. So we're going to put this one into the 1K2 slots side by side here on the board. So your board should now look like this at the front. So make sure you keep your soldering iron tip nice and clean. Now your next resistor is your 220 ohm resistor and this is the red, red, brown, gold resistor. So you want to put it right here on your board where it says 220R. So as you can see, all our little soldering joints are very, they have a minimal amount of solder on them, just a little mountain shape. So you can see if I hold it up, they're quite flat on the board. So just enough solder 
to secure the, con the component in place. You also have your capacitors, the polyester capacitors and electrolytic capacitors. Capacitors are measured in farads. Capacitors are used for storing big charges. So your next two components are your 100 NF capacitors. They're called polyester capacitors. And it doesn't matter which way they go in, as they don't have polarity, so the legs are the same length. So let's put the first one in. So they go here and also here. So it says 100 NF on the board. So after you've soldered your components, feel free to just tidy them up a little bit. Always makes the board look nicer, more professional. So as you can see, we have quite a lot of capacitors. We have six in total. So there's two 100 UFs, one 2.2 UF, one 22 UF, and two 470 UF. So they have their values written on the side of them, on the black side of the capacitors. And then you have to make sure these align with the same values on the PCB. So make sure you keep neatening up your board throughout. So we'll just get these nice and neat. So they're all your capacitors now soldered in. You have two red LEDs, or light emitting diodes. This is a basic electronic light. It's a type of diode, again, which means it only allows current to flow in one direction. Therefore, the legs are different lengths. If you solder it in the wrong way around, it won't light up. And these go in these slots here. So make sure the long and short legs correspond to the long and short legs on the diagram and the plus and minus sides. Before you put your component in, make sure you bend the legs 90 degrees. So this is what your board should look like after the LEDs are put in and wiggle them around if they're not nice and straight. The chip amplifier. This is a tiny amplifier circuit in one package. The chip amp is an IC which stands for integrated circuit. It's a small compact circuit printed on a silicone wafer. And this one goes in the, just behind the capacitors in the little space with chip amp written on it. And it has five different legs and make sure these all feed in when you're pushing it in. Again, once you've soldered in your components, make sure they're fitting nicely on the board. So the next component is the stereo jack. It looks like this. So it has five legs. Just make sure that all the five legs go through. Don't turn it over. So we've now soldered in the stereo jack and you need a bit more solder for these joints as they've got larger gold pads. You have a potentiometer. This is a resistor that you can control. Turning the knob on the potentiometer increases and decreases the amount of resistance, a bit like a tap in the flow of water. In this case, we use it to control the volume of the speaker. You want to put that in to this slot that has three spaced golden pins and it says pot on it. Mold your white tack around that component. It might be a bit tricky at first. There is one basic switch. It allows electricity to flow through the circuit when it is switched on by completing it. When it is switched off, it breaks the circuit, stopping the flow of electricity. This is to turn your speaker on and off. Make sure that it goes on the outside like this so you can reach the switch when you want to turn it on and off. So the next component is the terminal block. This is quite a big component. And this goes where this little symbol is here. And then these gold pads are quite large compared to the other ones, so they'll need a lot more solder. So hold the soldering iron on them and then just keep adding solder until it fills up that pad. And you shouldn't have to move the soldering iron too much. The gold pad should just heat up all the way through. So these ones need quite a lot of solder. So the next component is the optocoupler. And this one has a little dot at the top right, if you can see that. And then this needs to correlate on the board as well. The optocoupler is an electronic component that allows us to control the volume of the amplifier with Arduino. So, top right with the dot, because that's where the notch is shown at the top as well. So it's in this space here. Now we're going to go for the four pin header. And this goes in to where it says, from Arduino on the board. and secure it again with your white tack. These ones need a bit more solder again because they're slightly bigger power. Now we have to test that our circuit works, so we'll need to take our battery holder, just place it into where the battery holder is meant to be and not solder it yet. So 
This is the only component that goes through the other way on the board. And then when you turn it on, the red LED light should light up. Sometimes it won't light up, even if your board is working correctly, because you might have soldered in the light the wrong way around, so you can check by playing sound through it. So if we turn that off, and now that it's working, we know that we can solder the battery in. So firstly take the battery out, so that we don't want to solder it whilst that's in. And then repeat the process the same as before. And before you solder it on, make sure that you use your sticky pads on the either the PCB or on the battery holder. Just like that, and then press it down. The exciter is a type of speaker that attaches onto surfaces and turns them into resonating surfaces. So the next stage is soldering together your exciter to the copper wires. So a neat trick here is when you separate the two wires, you use the plastic to then twist the metal so it makes it easier to solder later on. So your wires should be securely on the exciter before you start soldering. And then I find if you hold the soldering iron underneath and add solder from the top, it should join the two nicely. So there you go, you should have liked that. It's not a very precise process, just so that it makes a nice solid contact. So the next bit's very simple. To connect your exciter to the PCB, you just push the wires through. Plug in your stereo jack cable and then plug the other side into your MP3 player. And make sure you don't remove the sticky label until you've tested it on your surface. So let's give it a go. The DIY speaker's turned on, and then. So thank you for watching, and have fun experimenting with different sounds on different materials.